Many people, church, have, have sought the gifts of God, and some have received gifts from God, yet they haven't matured, though, in the love of God. And that's what we're talking about today. We saw that last week, the Corinthian Christians, they were uh, very immature. Paul called them carnal. Carnal means uh, flesh. It's derived from the word carn uh, or meat. It, it, it means flesh. They were very fleshly. They were very carnal. They were very uh, meat-headed, if you will, uh, fleshly. And <clears throat> they were operating in spiritual gifts, yes, but as they were operating in spiritual gifts, Paul says you're operating carnally. And God's plan, church, isn't that we be filled with the Spirit, isn't that we operate in gifts, and that we then operate in them carnally. Can I get a witness? It's that we operate out of and in the love of God, not out of carnal or natural or selfish gain, but that we grow up into Him, into all things, into wisdom and love and the love of God. So last week we looked at gifts of the Holy Spirit, and one of the manifestations of the gifts of the Holy Spirit was that people began to speak in tongues, and they, they began to pray in tongues, a prayer language to God. And then uh, the one we're looking at today, church, is much different than the gift that we've been talking about that was the manifestation of the gift of the Holy Spirit in a prayer language. As we saw last week, when you receive the Holy Spirit, again, one of those manifestations may be the prayer language that you have. Uh, you're not speaking to man, but you're speaking to who? To God. You're communicating with God. And the gift of tongues that we're going to see in 1 Corinthians is different than the manifestation of that prayer language that God is talking about. So we're going to start in 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, one, chapter 12, verse 1. And Paul says something very extraordinary here. He says, now concerning spiritual gifts, so he's not saying in this context concerning anything else, but concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Man, that's a, that's a profound statement. We need to think about that for a moment. Paul's saying, concerning spiritual gifts, I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be uh, ill-equipped or, or unlearned in this. I, I don't want you to be uneducated. Paul says, I want you to know about the gifts, but I want you to operate them in them properly. And you've got uh, two groups here. You've got groups that, that have never known the gifts, never operated in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and they're ignorant to them. But then you have another group of people that they've believed for the gifts, they've operated in the gifts, and listen, they're ignorant to them. Paul says, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Now, remember, who was he talking to? He was talking to the church of Corinthians, right? He was talking to the Corinthians, and they operated in every gift, Paul says. In every gift they operated, but he's speaking to them, and he's saying, listen, I don't want you to be ignorant. What does that mean? That means that they were being ignorant. So he's going to show them a better way and how they should operate in the gifts. And, uh, you know, he, again, remember, he wasn't talking to people that didn't believe in the gifts. He wrote them, and, he, and they believed, and he said, Look, I don't want you to be unlearned, uneducated, and ignorant. There's some things that, that we need to understand, Corinthians. And, and listen, I'm going to raise my hand. I don't want to be ignorant either. How many of you want to be ignorant? Don't raise your hand to that. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding. We don't want to be ignorant any longer. We want to learn. We want to grow. We want to keep growing in our knowing. Amen? Okay, let's look at the gifts as Paul uh, describes in chapter 12. We're going to start here in verse 4. And we're going to go verse by verse and we're going to look at what, what Paul's saying. He's saying there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but the same God. You notice it's the same one, the same Lord, the same God over and over and over, who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the what? Profit of all. For the profit of all. In other words, any gift of the Holy Spirit. Listen, I have both gifts and calling of my life. And the Bible says the gifts and the calling that I've received are without repentance according to the word of God. That your gifts and your callings are without repentance. Listen, God didn't give me those gifts, church. Listen, because I was mature. Now some of you that know me go, yeah, I get that, Trent. But I, God didn't give me those gifts because I'm mature. 
in, in the Lord and I, I knew all things. God literally, church, gave me my gifts and my calling while I was immature. In my immaturity, God called me. And then, since then, He's called me to mature more today than I was 10 years ago. More today than I was 20 years ago. Any manifestation of gifts, church, in our life, they are not for our gain, Paul says. He said it's for the profit of all. It's for the profit of of all the body of Christ. And therefore the church's edification. I, I gave you that word last week. It's building up. It's emboldening. It's for the church's edification, not my own edification. They're not for me to serve me and bless me. They're for me to serve you, to serve the body and bless the body. Uh, they're not for me to think, church, listen, that I've arrived or that I'm mature. Amen? Just because... Someone is operating in, in a spiritual gift or God has blessed them in a calling and they operate in the call. It doesn't necessarily mean they're mature. God, God wills for all of us to find our calling and our operation. But all the gifts are distributed to serve the body and not serve myself. My gifts, church, from the Holy Spirit aren't for me. Guess what, who they're for? They're for you. Amen? They're not to profit me. They're not to promote me. They're to profit you and to promote you. They're not to bless me. They're to bless you. And listen, your gifts are not for yourself. They're for me. <laughs> and, and, and for everyone else in the body of God. They're for not to bless you, although the, you will be blessed by them, but they're to be a blessing to others. You are to have and operate in both your calling and gifts for the promotion of the body of Christ, for the, for the profit of all, Paul says. Paul goes on to say in verses 8 through 11, he talks about nine different gifts that the Holy Spirit has distributed to the body. And the Word of God says to one, not to all, but to one is given this gift, and to another that gift, and to another this gift. And it's the Holy Spirit that wants to work all of those gifts. Again, to one over here, and to one over there, and to one over there. He wants to work all those gifts together for the body of God, to profit all the body of God. Amen? Amen. To profit all of the body of God. The profit of the whole church. Man, could, could you imagine if the entire body of Christ that's on the planet today operated in their calling and the gifts that God's called them to, and it wasn't for themselves, but it was for the body, for the edification of the body, the emboldening of the body, where we'd be today? Oh my goodness, I can't even imagine. Everyone be promoted, everyone be blessed in the kingdom. Now he lists nine gifts here, and they're, they're set in three groups of three, if you're taking notes. Three group, groups of three, Paul describes them. There are three gifts that are see gifts, three gifts that are say gifts, and three gifts that are do gifts. See, say, do. Three gifts that Paul gives. And if you're taking notes, the first three are see. And again, the reference was in verses 8 through 11. And the see gifts are word of knowledge, because that's something you see. You can't know things of God or supernatural things or, or things that are divinely spiritual in the natural. They come from God. These are a seeing gift. The, uh, a word of knowledge, number one. Number two, a word of wisdom. And then number three, discerning of spirits. Those are the see gifts. I see those things through spiritual eyes. And then the, the second three are the say gifts. They are prophecy, prophecy, and again, this gift, the next gift that we're going to talk about is different than when the Holy Spirit was given to man and they spoke to God with utterance of, of a prayer language. But this gift is a say gift. It's the gift of tongues and it's not to be done without the third say gift, which is the interpretation of tongues. And then... The third set of three is the do gifts, which is the working of miracles, number one, gifts of healings, and then gifts of faith. It takes great faith, and, and that's a gift sometimes of the Holy Spirit, to have great faith, enormous faith. Again, these things, when they work, church, in harmony with the entire body of Christ, it's incredible to see the kingdom of God that's accomplished and the blessing that we can be one to another. He goes on to say in verses 12 through 27, Paul talks about unity and diversity in the body. Unity but and in diversity in the body. That there is a unity that we all have within the church, within Christianity. 
Can I get a witness that we have a unity in the body of Christ? Listen, we do not have a unity in the body of Christ to all have the same haircut. Amen? We don't have a unity in the body of Christ to, to, to wear makeup or not wear makeup. We don't have a unity of conformity to all wear the same clothes. We don't have a unity of conformity. Can I get an A women to have to wear dresses on Sunday morning? Woo. Got revival <laughs> broke out there. Uh, you're not going to shout me down on anything else, but man, dresses on church. Yeah. Amen. I love y'all. Uh, but we don't have a unity of conformity to be clones of one another. We're diverse in the kingdom of God. Isn't that good? And to one God gives this and to another God gives that. But we are diverse. We are uniquely called to be unified in the love of God. We are unified in the body of Christ. We are unified by the Spirit of God. We are unified in the blood of Jesus. Those things are things that unify us. Amen? Make us all one body. But in that one body, God, blah, 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 blah. That's not speaking tongues. That's me just messing up. God, through Paul, said that there is unity in diversity. To one is an eye, but not everyone can be an eye. To another is an ear, but not everyone's an ear in the body of God, and a foot, and a, and, 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 and a hand. There's diversity, and we celebrate that diversity because we bless when the Holy Spirit puts us together and pieces us together and knits us together in the body of Christ. We celebrate that because we are all there for each other. The gifts, church, are no different. Now, we will preach the body of Christ until kingdom come. But we don't preach the gifts of the Holy Spirit for whatever sacred notions we have or whatever we're afraid of, what people might say or think. But the Word of God says the gifts were given for the same reason. That you are all unique and different, but we've been unified in the body of Christ and the Holy Spirit knits us together by our spiritual gifts to bless one another. To be there for one another. Listen, church, not to hurt one another. Not to confuse one another. Not to be a foreigner to one another. But to serve, to bless, to honor, and to build up the body of God which blesses God Almighty. It, I, church, am not the whole body of Christ. I'm not the body. Jesus, when he lived out on this planet as a man and as all God, he was the fulfilling of the Godhead completely. He was the body of Christ. And when he ascended to the Father, he did something very special. He sent us a promise from the Father, the help of the Holy Spirit. And we have then become the body of Christ, both in heaven, those that have gone before us, and on earth. We make up the entire body of Christ, and Jesus is the head. Man, that's so good, church. Now, why did he do that? Well, in Jesus was the fulfilling work of everything that God had planned. And, and in Jesus, he could do and say everything the Father told him to do and to say, because he was the body of Christ. What are you? The body of Christ, which Jesus is the head. And you can say and do exactly what the Father tells you to say, exactly what the Father tells you to do, and to be a blessing to each other. Paul goes on, then on to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, and then you'll see the difference here. And God has appointed these in the church. So there's these appointments that, that not man has made, but that God has made. Now man will self-promote, amen, and proclaim, but God has made these appointments within the church. He said, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues, are all apostles. Now we're going to answer this question. It's not hard, it's not a trick question. Let me, we're just going to answer. Are all apostles? Bless your heart, you think they're all apostles. All but Elise. Are all apostles? No. This is... This is a, a, a question that, that Paul was throwing out there like, <laughs> you know, are all apostles? No, of course not. All knew that, right? He said, are all apostles? I want to show you something very uh, special here. Are all apostles that God appoints? And the answer is no. But an apostle is given as a gift to the body for what reason? For what reason is the apostle given 
to the body. To minister to the body. To bless the body under the appointment of apostleship. We can talk about the definition, but really the definition of apostle means the sent one. The sent one. And, and, and many people, how many know individually that we've all in Christ been called the sent ones? That we're to go into all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? We are the sent ones. So to a measure, we all operate as the sent ones, but the Holy Spirit gives and the God ordains and appoints apostles, but not all are apostles. Then he goes on to say, are all prophets? What's the answer? Okay, you're getting more bold. Okay? It's not trick questions, I promise. No, not all are prophets. Uh, But how many know prophets prophesy? But not all that prophesy are prophets. Prophets. Then it goes on to say, are all teachers? No. No. Everybody thinks they're a teacher. But are all teachers? No. But listen, I am a teacher. I'm anointed. I'm appointed by God. To teach. And when did I receive that gift of teaching? When did I receive that call of teaching in my life that the Bible says is without repentance? When did God call me? When did God sanctify me? The Bible says, in my mother's womb. I'm going to tell you something about maturity and your calling and your gifting. Does that mean at four years old I was mature enough yet or, or, or wise enough yet in my teaching, in my calling, in my gifting to pastor you? Looking around, maybe some of you at four, but I'm kidding. Y'all did not like that. (laughs) But no, I was was not ready. I was not mature enough at four years old to pastor or operate in the gifting or the call which God had called me. But just because people get gifts or just because they're anointed with a calling in their mother's womb, doesn't necessarily mean that they're mature, they're ready, or they're able to operate in a gift or a calling. And that's what Paul was telling them in 1 Corinthians here. Listen, you're doing this improperly. I don't want you to be ignorant. And he's going to show them a way not to be ignorant. Just because people get gifts that suit their calling doesn't necessarily mean they're mature or ready enough to operate in them. Are all teachers? No, but to to an extent... Through the wisdom and the working of God, we can all teach people about Jesus. Amen? Okay. Are all workers of miracles? Listen, God gives gifts. I, mean, I don't want to belabor this point, but I want, to, I want to speak on it. God gives gifts not because we're mature. A, a lot of people think that if I can just have enough faith and I can just be mature enough, God will give. No, it's a gift. It's not something earned. It's not something deserved. Just like the grace of God in Jesus was not anything earned or deserved by us. Amen? It was by His righteousness and His righteousness alone that we were saved by grace through faith. And it's by His righteousness alone that we will receive a gift by grace through faith. Miracles are all workers of miracles. No, that's a ministry gift specifically given for the body. But, but church, can we all believe and pray for miracles? Absolutely. Can't we all see miracles? I, I, I don't know if I've ever operated in this gift or not, but I know that I've believed and I've fought for a miracle and I've seen a miracle in my life and the lives of others. Amen? Do all have gifts of healings? Y'all getting weaker and weaker as we go. Do, do all get, have gifts of healings? No. No. Not all have the supernatural gift of healings to heal people. But can't we all lay hands on the sick and believe that they'll recover? Can't we all believe in the stripes of Jesus? That His body was broken so ours wouldn't have to be? Absolutely. Absolutely. One is for the body, but all of us can operate, listen church, to a measure... These gifts, because we have the faith in Jesus and who He was and the redemptive work of the cross and the Holy Spirit living inside of us. So, one, the Spirit gives as a gift. But all of us, together as the body of Christ, to a measure, can believe for all of these things. It's really important that we understand that. Do all have gifts of tongues? No. 
Now, he's not here talking about a prayer language. He's not talking about when you've been filled with the Holy Spirit and now you have a language that you speak to God. He's, this is specific here. He's talking about tongues and then the second one, do all interpret. No, that these two go hand in hand. He's talking about public gift for the profit of all the body of Christ. Just like I taught you last week, if someone were to get up here and speak in an unknown language and we have not an interpretation of that, we messed up. We miss God because because it's for the profit of all. And if you you hear and don't understand, it's as if they're talking to the air and you're a foreigner to them, as we talked about last week. Public tongues have to have an interpreter. Why is that? Why? Because as I shared with you last week, the gift of the Holy Spirit and the manifestation of a prayer language, a private tongue to, to God, the Bible said, was not you speaking to man, but speaking to God. The public gift given by the Holy Spirit for for the edification of all is God speaking to man. And listen, we need to know what He has to say. Amen. We need to know what God is saying. So if it is a true public gifting of tongues, there will be an interpretation of it. Amen. Amen. The gift of tongues is God talking to us and we need to know what He has to say. The gift of the Holy Spirit, church, if you yield to it and you'll believe for it and and the gift of the Holy Spirit comes on you as a promise, as a baptism of the Holy Spirit, there are manifestations and maybe one of those is a prayer language to God. But the gift of tongues is a ministry gift. It's specific. And, And listen, church, I don't operate in that gift. I don't operate in that gift. So you never hear me do that. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, if there's no interpretation, keep silent in church. You know, he also said, not too many verses after that, women, keep silent in church. Any amens? Oh, wait. Hey, hey. Hey. You know, I'm going to tell you, in context, you know what Paul was talking about? He was talking about improper uh, public speaking. He's talking about being improper in church. And And he was talking about spiritual things. And basically what he was saying is, wives, don't belabor and and, and don't speak over your husband in public. Go home and y'all talk this over. Y'all are looking at me like I'm cursed. Everybody say, I love my precious little pastor. Listen, what he's saying here in context is in public, there's things to be done in an orderly fashion. And you usurping the authority of your partner, your spouse, in public is wrong. Can I get a witness? Men and women. Amen? Yeah, I thought so. (laughs) But if there's an issue, you work it out in private. There's a place for that. Don't usurp each other's authority in public. You go work that out in love, and God will bless it. Amen. And maybe you can be a public spectacle of faith instead of just a public spectacle. Okay. Sorry. That's my bandwagon. I'm off of it. But Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, uh, in, in chapter 14, if there's no interpretation, keep silent in church. There's a proper place for your prayers, your intimate personal prayers. That's alone. And there's a proper place for the gift of tongues. And Paul laid it out clearly. But how many know if someone spoke in an unknown tongue, like I said, and we had no interpretation, we messed up. We messed up. Listen, church, I, I don't want you to be ignorant. Amen? Too many times we, we gloss over these scriptures because we don't like them. <laughs> we don't like how they make us feel. We don't like how we've been taught one way and, and the Bible says something over here that... Church, I'm telling you, I didn't find freedom in Christ until I believed the Word of God and not what, what man said. I didn't find freedom in Christ until I believed God be true and every man a liar. I'm not asking you to check me on it. I'm asking you to check God on it. And I'm also not asking you to be weird. Amen? I'm asking you to know God and, and search His heart. Search His very nature. And, and, and I don't want to do things out of order. I don't want to mess up. How about you? We want to do things right. We want to do things in order. We want to do things in love. We want to do things that blesses God and blesses Jesus' His Son and gives preference to the Holy Spirit out of love and grace and truth. 
not anything that would hurt anybody in this room. Amen. I think y'all get that. Paul goes on to say in verse 31, but earnestly desire the best gifts. And listen, I don't really know what Paul is saying here. Uh, I, I haven't searched it out in entirety. I think I know what Paul is saying here. But how could we say one gift is better than another? You know, I think they're all precious. I think they're all wonderful. But in context, I believe what Paul is conveying here is that you have an operation and you have a calling. And the Holy Spirit will give gifts according to that operation and calling. And you should search those gifts that suit your calling that would profit all. Again, this is a trinism. This is on me. Y'all search it out. But I believe that's what God is saying is, listen, I, I am a pastor. And in the position of pastor, I should want to desire any gift that would fulfill my calling in Christ. Amen? I need to desire a word of wisdom. How are you going to get a revelation? If God gives me the gift of wisdom, He reveals things to me, I can plainly put them into English for you, and now you've been edified, built up, blessed. It's the profit of all. So I need a word of wisdom. I need a word of knowledge. I need to prophesy. I need great faith. Hallelujah. I need to look at where we're at now and go, this is, this is awesome. God, you're so amazing. And see with great faith what God already sees in our future. And go, God, you're so awesome. God, you're so amazing. You, you think 10,000 people are going to know Jesus because of Connect Church? Amen, Jesus. See, I'm getting excited. Why? Great faith. Amen. Amen. So I believe that God... There is a better gift or best gift that suits the calling and the operation that God's given you. And we need to believe for those things. But this is really why I believe he said that in all of what we just read. He says, and yet I show you a what? More excellent way. So he's been talking about miracles and gifts and man, just the, just the pizzazz of God. Spirit fingers. Amen. He's been showing you the pizzazz of God, the, the wonders of God, the works of God. And they're so amazing. They're so mighty. Aren't they wonderful? But then, yet I show you a more excellent way. This is the very last verse of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. They didn't have chapters and verses as Paul was writing this letter. He, he went on to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the more excellent way. He says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I've become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all perfect, all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me Nothing. Nothing. He was, Paul said, I'm going to show you a more excellent way. The more excellent way, church, is in love. That we love one another. What was Jesus' commandment? That you love one another as he has loved us? Man, that's a, that's a weighty goal. Paul said that's the more excellent way that we love one another. I want to break this down for you. And this is, this is probably one of the most profound statements in the Bible. Have I not love? Verse 1 says, If I speak with the tongues of men and angels. The tongues of angels. I'm not really sure what the tongues of angels is, but I'm sure it's angelic. I'm sure it's amazing. I'm sure it's mighty. I'm sure it's of God. That's wonderful. He says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels... Without love, what am I? An annoying sound. A clanging cymbal. I'm, a, I'm just a nuisance noise. Parents, can I get a witness? That's annoying. He says, if I have not love, I'm just an annoying sound. I don't care if God has given you any gift. If you, if you operate out of that gift with anything other than love, it's annoying. Amen? It's annoying. Verse 2. 
I have the gift of prophecy. I think he said all prophecy. No, he said all understanding, all mysteries, and all knowledge. Could you imagine if I had all understanding, all mysteries, and all knowledge? Our church would be 20 million people. They would, they would be interviewing me on Charisma Magazine. They would be wanting to know what's going on in the world today. Y'all, y'all just are not uh, appreciating this, are you? Could you imagine if I knew all the mysteries of God? I'll, I'll do it like my five-year-old or my six-year-old now says it. <laughs> Could you imagine? You know, Paul said, listen, I, I have all mysteries, all mysteries, all knowledge, gift of prophecy, faith. Perfect, awesome, wonderful faith to even command a mountain to move. Yet without love, Paul says, you are nothing. You know, people get offended when I say that you're nothing. You know, people get offended when, when they're so full of pride and they're puffed up with what, what, what God's doing in their life. And, and I look at them and go, yeah, but you're nothing. They get offended by that. Why is that? Without love, church, what are we? You don't like to say it either, did you? Without love, we are nothing. Nothing. Listen, I, I want to tell you this. God doesn't just have love for you. We've talked about this. God doesn't have a measure of love for one person over here and a different measure of love for somebody else over here. God doesn't have love for you. Why is that? Because God is the stuff. God is love. He is love towards you. If we're to operate in love, it's to operate as God. As the body of Christ operating in the world. Jesus operated in nothing but love. Without love, we're in annoying noise. We are nothing. He goes on to say in verse 3, Give all my goods to feed the poor. Listen, we're doing our Thanksgiving dinner. And I don't know if a lot of you know this. And I'm not going to tout and, 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 and give our, ourselves a clap on the back or anything like that. But we always order double food than we think people are going to be here. So we, we thought there might be 100 people here to, to eat the Thanksgiving dinner, so we ordered 200 helpings. Why do we do that? Because we love food in here. Yeah. No, because we know that we can be a blessing to others and not just ourselves. And so we take the rest of that food and we go take it to Grace Campus and we feed the homeless. We're going to do that today. If you want to come and you want to be a part of that, you want to wrap some of that stuff up with us and take it, you can be a blessing. Well, I didn't pay for it. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. It was your tithes and offerings that paid for that. Well, 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 I, I, you know, I had these plans. Well, are they really that important? No, see, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know, no guilt, no condemnation. Amen? Amen. But we can be a blessing. But what if I take all those goods and I feed the poor? What if I give my body over to science? And I let them do all these studies and let it give my body over as a sacrifice. Wouldn't that be noble? Wouldn't that be just and worthy of, a, of but what good does it do for me what does it profit me Paul says without love it profits you nothing nothing church we need to understand this without love what are we doing nothing nothing this is different for a lot of us in here today to understand that God gives gifts and he doesn't give them to hurt us but He gives it to bless us and bless each other. This is different. I get that. And and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with us not all being on the same page. Amen? But we're all called to one unity. Amen. All called to one unity. And none of that stuff that we've talked about, none of it matters without love. Without love. Paul says, I show you a more excellent way. The more excellent way, even in the gifts, is in love versus in the flesh. 